So welcome everyone to day two of Gain Youth Summit. Please welcome, use the chat section, tell us where you're joining us from. My name is Chingwe Okoli and I'm the Executive Director of Grand Africa Initiative. We are really, really delighted to have you join us today, the second day of uh, the Gain Youth Summit. We're excited to see you all joining us this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're joining from. Please tell us in the chat section, where are you coming from? Where are you joining from? And now uh, we'll move on to the next session where we want to hear about success stories in, in Africa, the people who've, you know, who've become a success stories. We want to listen to them and see what can we learn from them? What, how, how has been their journey and what can we take from it so that we can include that in our lives and, and, and succeed as African youth. In this session, it will be having the top Topic, making it in Africa, becoming Africa's success story. We have Suzy Wokabi, who's the founder of Suzy Beauty Cosmetics, all the way from Kenya. We have Kalista Okoronko, she's an actor, Nollywood, and also the CEO of Style Blazers and Ashes Africa, all the way from Nigeria. We have Darlington Akogo, founder and executive director of Kara Agro AI, Mino Health AI Labs, and Gudra AI, all the way from Ghana. Our moderator today will be Asito Ture, who's an advisor at GIZ Senegal. I will speak about uh, the, the moderator a bit, and of course, she will be able to speak about the panelists. So our moderator, Asito Ture, she is a development corporation professional, youth activist, and an entrepreneur. She has a solid field experience supporting civil society organizations across Africa, inc including conceptualizing and implementing a waste managing management product uh, project, I'm sorry, in Congo, supporting a women-led microcredit association in Benin, building capacity for mutual insurances in Senegal, as well as experience collecting, analyzing data and advising in agricultural activities uh, in Rwanda. She has been involved in the key intercontinental dialogues with the African Union and the European Union, in particular as a diaspora delegate of the AU EU Youth Plugging Initiative. So uh, it will be an honor to have such an amazing panel and such an amazing moderator for this session and you have our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. I am Aisa Touré and today I'll be uh, moderating the three minutes. Uh, if you can just mention uh, your name, your location, and the field of activity that you're working in. We can maybe start with Kalista. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Kalista Okoronko. I'm an Hollywood actor. I run a company called Style Blazers. It's a fashion outfit, and another one called Usher's Afrique. We provide hosts and hostesses for all kinds of events. I'm in Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm on a movie set at the moment. That work. It's um, such an honor to be here with all of you, and I appreciate to be invited to this platform as a panelist. Um, that's it. Thank you so much, Kelly Star. Maybe we can move to uh, Darlington. I see you're connected. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hello, we Hi, Darlington. How are you? Oh, okay. Sure. Ah, okay, sure. So, yeah. so my name is um, I am the founder and director of Mino Health AI Labs, which is an AI for health startup uh, located in Ghana. And also, uh, AI where we implement and then provide a number of AI and precision agriculture solutions. And we also train young people. Uh, across a few African countries through our program, Ramilla AI Institute. So I am from Ghana, but I'm currently um, in Italy. So uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here with everyone. Thank you, Darlington. Um, I will ask uh, one or two questions to our panelists. Uh, you will have uh, more or less five to 10 minutes maximum to, uh, to answer. So I will quickly start with, start with Kalista. Um, Kalista. So um, you have a very interesting profile. Uh, you're an actor, but you're also CEO of Style and Blazers and Ushers. So how mm -hmm. come you have ended in such different activities? Um, 
first of all, acting has been my first love. I've always loved the entertainment space. So, and um, the, the, the other aspect of me, which is style blazers, is just the, the business side. And I, I, it's, I, I find multitasking very, very easy, <laughs> unlike other people who, who are very uneasy with multitasking. In my space, I like to do different things at different times, and I like to always task my brain. So, but the thing is, with Star Blazers, Star Blazers, I do not even have to be there, like I do not have, have to be there in person to run it. It's an online platform to get orders for um, all, all kinds of fashion items and to deliver to your doorsteps and to Korea and other, other means as well. Yeah, I have people running it behind the background. I'm sorry, there's so much noise here, but I'm on the movie set, I'm at work, and there's so many people, the crew, the cast, and I had to just take out time to, to sit in and do this. And like... I'm the lead actor, the, the, the costume is by the side standing and the makeup artist, everyone is just here waiting for me. So that's why you're hearing so much noise and I apologize for that. Okay. Uh, and so, as I was saying, um, I like to do a lot of things and um, Star Blazers is just, Star Blazers and Ushers Africa as the CEO just shows the enterprising side of me. I like to entertain, but on the other side, I also like to do business. Business is what keeps me pushing. <laughs> so that's it. All right, thank you so much. And thank you for your time. Uh, maybe one quick question. Um, I've looked up on the internet, you have a very interesting profile and I've actually started to look at one of your movies. And uh, my question would be, um, how do you become City People Music Award for most promising act of the year? How do you become that person? <laughs> Oh, okay. I think there's, there's, that, that, that title is supposed to be City People Movie Promising Act of the Year. I don't know why there's music in it, because I think it's just typo from whoever put it on, on the net. It's, it's supposed to be movie. It's an award I won in 2000. And, so um, it's, it's an award that I won like in 2016. So it's, it's, it's for a movie award. It's not a music award at all. So, um, well, I, I, I got that award recognition from a movie I did in Ghana, in Accra, Ghana. Um, I played the role of a blind lady mm -hmm. and it was very challenging because my eyes were open and I had to pretend like I wasn't seeing anybody when in the real sense I could see people. So it was very, very challenging. And then when people saw it, they, they, I had lots of people interviewing me saying, Are you, can you actually see? <laughs> and I go, yeah, it's because I'm seeing you. <laughs> I can see you. So I got, I got after as I did that movie, I, I got lots and lots of recognition. I even got another, I don't know, another award that's called Zafa for mm -hmm. best promising act in London, UK. So that's just one of it. That's just it. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations for these awards. It's very well deserved. And maybe when we, one last question from my side would be, um, so as an actor and as a you know, business woman, what would, be, what would you say are the lessons learned um, from your experience in both uh, different sectors? Well, I would like to start, I would like to start by, um, by, I would like to start with, first of all, talking about style blazers. When I had, the, the idea to start up Star Blazers as an online platform to get fashion items across to people. Um, I had wanted my younger sister to run it, okay? But she tried to do it. She tried to create a page, tried to put up the items on, on, on the page, but there wasn't so much response. And I looked at it and one time she called me and said, oh, Kalista, I don't know what is going on, but it looks like these people don't, don't want to relate to this, this, this new business we're trying to do. What do you think is the problem? Then I thought about it and I'm like, okay, maybe I should use my own platform because it looks like here in Africa, I would say here in Africa, here in Africa, here in Nigeria, people like to identify with, um, people like to identify with people who they feel have achieved something. And I'm not saying that because I just want to say it. When I took Star Blazers from my sister's platform and put it on my platform, that's when sales started coming in. 
because of my followership, with, the, with my fan base and every other thing. Stablaze has kept moving and moving and moving. And um, I don't know why it's like that, but <laughs> that's just how things are run in, in Africa or wherever I can say, but I'm just saying from my own side of the story. We, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of, um, a, a, a lot of factors that actually hinder um, um, our activities in Stablazers. And this, which is one that I just mentioned, I would have loved my sister to run it from her own side. But because she doesn't have the fan base and we usually don't believe that, like, when she started running the page first, they, they would ask her, oh, how many celebrities buy it from here? How many, can you mention names of people you have sold to since you're an online business, business fashion outfit? How are we sure you're not going to run away with our money when we pay you and then you don't come to deliver? But mm-hmm. when I advertise Star Blizzards on my own page, they don't ask me those questions. They just say, oh, how much is this item? Because in their head, they believe me. In their head, I cannot defraud them. In their head, it's mm-hmm. coming from me. It's got to be real. So you see, I think that's like a major problem a lot of people face. Youths are enterprising, but then a lot of people don't want to believe them because they've been used, they've been scammed, they've been a lot of people have gone through a lot from people who, who try to trust. That's basically. All right, thank you. And for the part about the acting, how did you start acting? How do you find yourself in this in this space? Um. Like I said, when I was introducing myself, I had my first love, and right from secondary, right from secondary school, I've always been in the drama society. I would lead dramas. I would write down plays for us to 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 act out when parents come for their um, parents teachers meeting and all that. And they would always tell me, parents would always tell me, "Oh, you do good. You do good entertaining. You do good acting." And you know, when I when I when I, after my um, after my university education, University of Nigeria, Suka, I picked up acting. Uh, I started attending auditions, started attending castings, and from one role to another role to another role to this point that I am now. So I, I would, I would, I would, I would say that it's been one whole process of growth, and I've grown so much over the years, and um, that's what consistency would do. That is what um, that is what real passion and 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 a strong a strong ambition would do. Yeah, because it's never easy anywhere. It was never easy in 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 this industry for me. It's still not easy. Mm. It's, it's a whole process of growth. Like I said, sometimes I remember going for a, an audition. They gave me the script. The script is always like this. It looks like this. Like this is one that I'm, that I'm on, the set I'm on, it's called My Patience. This is the producer's name and this is the production name. So they gave me this script. Once they hand you this script, when you go for a casting or an audition, you're automatically an indisposable part of the cast. Yeah? So one of those castings back in the days that got the script and I was so happy. I was going through the lines. I was going through the lines, going through everything. I had everything in my head. Only for me, one certain week to go to a, um, to a video rental shop then it used to be cds you know like the round cds and i rented one cd i came home i put it i put it in the in the video playing machine and then it was playing out the same movie i had the script for so it was already shot nobody called me for it they took me mm-hmm. got me and they shot it that alone could have like deterred me or just put me off, but it didn't. I said to myself, well, these people can actually do this movie without me. It goes to show that I need to work. I need to work to that point where when I'm giving a script and they say, Kalista, you're playing it, they will not film that movie without me in it. Because they'll say, oh, when I was writing the script, I saw Kalista as the character. And if Kalisa doesn't play that character, that movie will not come out the way that I want it to be. And that's the point I am now. So that's it. Determination, ambition, self, self, self will can do a lot for us, for everyone, because it did it for me. So that's it. Thank you, Kalista. So from what I hear from you, consistency, perseverance, and passion are the key words for your success. 
so now we will just move to our next panelist, Darlington Akogo. Um, so as you mentioned, Darlington, you're uh, the CEO and founder of a lot of initiatives, uh, Cara Agro AI, Mino Health AI Labs, and Gudra AI. So my question to you would be, uh, first of all, can you explain quickly what AI is, artificial intelligence, and how do you see AI in Africa? Sure. Thanks, uh, Aisha, too, for that. So um, artificial intelligence, um, the easiest way to define it will be that it's a general attempt to give machines human-like intelligence. So as human beings, we exhibit a lot of intelligence. Um, this very conversation is an exhibition of human intelligence, there are a number of things we do uh, from our different professions and the conversations we are having and all of that. So with AI, the goal is just to take that intelligence and create it an artificial uh, system. So with that general goal, uh, what have we been doing in Africa? So yeah, I made mention of Mino Health, AI and healthcare. What actually entails is that we've been developing AI solutions that can detect diseases. So this cuts across a number of diseases and a number of uh, what you call in the healthcare space modalities. So an example being, if you want to diagnose breast cancer, for example, um, taking mammograms is one of the steps that you might go through. So you have medical images that might capture um, the breast and the various vessels and intricacies within it. So with artificial intelligence, you can have a software that without even the expertise of, of a human expert, it can just look at that image and conclude whether someone has breast cancer or not. So this is actually, this is a real example of project that we've been working on. Uh, we currently have another project with even Imperial College London with funding from uh, UK Research and Innovation um, uh, center. So in agriculture, to what that usually means is that you can also detect diseases and pests, but then in crops. So a lot that is being done as far as AI in Africa, but then we are still in the early phase. Um, there's so much more that could be done, but then again, that is applicable to the rest of the world. AI is just in its very, very infancy and then so much is being done, so much lessons are being learned. Um, but yeah, no one, no one can say for a fact just how much AI is going to impact our world. We are, we are seeing a lot of impact, both positive and negative, but it's possible that the effect 10 years from now will be beyond even our measure, maybe positively, maybe negatively, or maybe a combination of both. All right, thank you very much, Wellington. Um, so can you quickly explain how did you end up in artificial intelligence? Is it something you studied or you just end up, end up being there like just by chance? Was it random? Right. I just want to know. I'm very curious about that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think I was fortunate in, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, from a very early age, I managed to discover what I was really passionate about, which was computer programming. So being able to tell computers what to do and how to do it. Um, I started from what, age 14. So artificial intelligence is new, fancy and complex, but then it's all part of this influencing how machines behave and what they can do. So starting from that side, I learned a lot of programming languages, learned a lot of things in the computer science and then AI, ended up being something I picked up because I had a lot of passion for it as a lot of young people are fascinated by robots and all this idea. So I got some books on it and I just learned how to do it. But more realistically, what happened also was that healthcare, I was really frustrated about the state of healthcare in Africa. So um, I had the opportunity to live, live, grow up in Ghana, but also move to Europe and then stay in a few uh, European countries over the years. So I could clearly see the difference in healthcare in Africa and then in Europe. And it really bothered me. And I wanted to do something about it with the skills I have gathered. And I realized that, okay, AI has potential to play a major role in influencing healthcare in Africa. So that actually made me even get more involved in, in artificial intelligence. I got all the books that I needed to get 
learned all the different algorithms and implemented them. So it's been years of just driven by either my own curiosity towards AI and then technology as a whole, but more practically, the fact that there was a problem I needed to solve and this technology was the best way to solve it. So that is what has driven me throughout that process. And interesting enough, I went, so I did not go through the academic route of say, hey, let me go get some PhD in AI. But interesting enough, over the years, I have uh, been lucky enough to work across both industry, government, and academia. So I've worked in, I've collaborated with research labs. I'm still collaborating with research labs, but I've actually even uh, taught as a lecturer in the university too as well. So it's been an interesting journey of how I got here. All right, thank you so much, Darlington. Um, I know that you're also working in the agricultural sector uh, with AI. So how do you see, um, how does AI address um, some of the challenges that you can find also in the agricultural sector? Right, so um, one of the key things that is, so in the next 15 years in Africa, we are required to increase our food production by 60% if we are supposed to feed our population, our growing population. And one of the issues that are holding us back is the fact that diseases and pests damage crops. And this is a major issue. Fall armyworm has been a major issue across a number of African counties. So if you can actually detect fall armyworm or detect other diseases and pests quickly enough and then respond to them accordingly, then that will help in boosting yield. Uh, in Ghana, the stat is what about 40% of crops are loss due to diseases and pests. So the opportunity with artificial intelligence and related technologies is that you can build this automated systems that would detect the disease and pests on their own. So this is what we do with Cara Grow AI. We do it in two forms. One, we have an Android app that you can just take photos of plant leaf and then it will tell you what disease is present and what is the best response to that disease, what pesticide or what sort of management practice would you use to deal with it? The other method we use is a drone. So you fly a drone across a field and then with our artificial intelligence system and then other technologies, we are able to identify problem regions on the field and then help you address it. So in the last few months, we've been implementing this project, um, this specific one that has to do with plants breeding. So we are working with one of the agricultural research institutes in Ghana called Sari. Uh, we are developing new breeds of granules. This is a breed that is going to give farmers higher yield, but also is going to be resilient towards diseases and pests. So we are using the same drone technology and AI to test the different breeds that are being developed to see the best one that is truly uh, resilient and has resistance towards diseases and pests. And this is just a number of, this is just a few stuff. It's endless what you can do. Weed detection, um, being able to even have a estimation, being able to predict that, okay, if I do this and this on the farm, then potentially when I harvest this, how much money I'm going to make. So you can correct your practices based on how much money you, you are going to make because at the end of the day, farming should be, Unless it's subsistence farming, farming is supposed to be a business, so agribusiness. So you need to know how your actions influence how much money you make. Um, so AI can help in this direction too as well. Thank you, Darlington. So I hear there's a lot of opportunities in AI. We'll come back to that later. I just want to finish quickly with Kalista. I know she's very busy and I've seen that she's been uh, currently uh, doing her makeup. So Kalista, I will ask you maybe one or two last questions and then let you go. I don't know if you're still online. Okay, I see you. Perfect. So maybe one question, Kalista, would be, um, as a fast rising actress, what has helped you and what advice uh, do you, would you want to give to an aspiring actress? Okay, it is, as an aspiring actor, it is imperative that you understand that the road is not easy. It's, there's not a shortcut. You have to be very resilient. You have to have you have to be 
passion driven first of all you know it's not enough to say i want to be famous that's what i want that's why i want to go into the entertainment industry that's why i want to become an actress it's not enough because if that's the driving force if if it's it's all about being famous for you you're going to get knocked out along the way because there's a whole lot of of of, of um character building to be done along the way and if you are not a strong-willed person it it will not it will not go down well for you first of all this this industry of us this entertainment industry is an industry that that um feeds on your um consistency it feeds on your on your determination i keep saying determination because sometimes, like when I was starting, I had to attend thousands and thousands of auditions. And for people, for, for young people these days, or for people who want to, who want to become um, entertainers, once they, once they go out to one meeting that doesn't turn out well, and they go out for another second meeting that doesn't turn out well, that's it for them. Mm. They, they, they don't want to. Um, and keep that dream alive and that's not okay and that's not enough if you want to be good at something you have to be passionate about it first of all and you have to understand that there will be a lot of downs before the ups okay you have to be at the valley before you get to the mountain that's that's there's no shortcuts you have to do the work before you get results so yes just be patient, be determined, be passion-driven, and, um, and do a lot of research and find out how the people who are there, how they got there, and, and just um, play your card right. That's it. There will be a lot of people who will tell you, oh, I'm going to make you, if you, if you, if you, if you don't um, play to my turn, you're not going to get there. But that is where determination and, 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 and the self, self-will comes in. You know, if if you play them side by side, you're you're just on your on your way to your success story. So that's it. That's it. Nobody can make you as long as you 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 know yourself. As long as you believe in your. Thank you so much, Kelly. So that was really great. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your experience sharing and for your advice. Um, so maybe one last question would be, um, how do you see uh, the Grand uh, African Initiative as a platform to engage with young people? Okay. First of all, I, I would like to say that I, I'm proud to be a part of this generation, a part of this generation of youths, where the youths are taking giant strides um, towards the, their development and it's 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 huge for me it is really really huge for me i'm happy with what um gain is doing for the youth and it's so 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 it's even more it's even more um exciting to see that people from all over all over the world 78 countries have joined in and it's, there's nothing more more gladdening than that. It gladdens my spirit, it gladdens my, my heart to even be a part of this. For you you all again giving me this platform to come here to speak is a big deal for me. And I'm, I'm glad and I pray that you all will continue to grow from strength to strength. It's good, please keep up the good work. I'm, I'm, I'm all up for, for youth, youth development and I believe that our time is now, our time is now to take over all the sectors of the economy. Let's take it by force. Let's take the entertainment sector. Let's take the health sector. Let's take the business sector. Let's take the leadership, the political sector. Let's mm -hmm. take it. I like what happened in my country where we had to, where the youths, my country, Nigeria, where the youths came out in mass to say no to, to police brutality, no to bad governance. That's the kind of generation of youths we, everyone would be proud of. And thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you. So you all are encompassing. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kalista. And I love, I'm taking this sentence with me. We should take over all the sectors of the economy. Thank you so much.
for your time. So now I'm just going to uh, going back to Darlington. So Darlington, you were talking earlier about the opportunities in artificial intelligence. So um, for you as a young person, um, what are the opportunities and the challenges for other young people to be uh, working or to invest or just be engaged in artificial intelligence? Yeah, I mean, um, the opportunities are quite endless. Um, nice thing about AI is that literally every sector could benefit from it, or more realistically, every sector is already in some sense benefiting from it. So if you're already in some sector or if you're passionate about healthcare or governance or any sector, um, you don't necessarily have to think about should I switch over to AI, just start noting down the problems in your sector and then start reading about how AI could help in addressing this problem. So in some sense, that could mean you learning how to develop AI tools for your sector. That's a huge opportunity right there. But also it could just be you knowing how to use the right tools towards addressing problem in your sector. So this could be because if you are trying to be valuable if especially in a world that is getting automated on a daily basis whoever knows how to use the modern tools whoever knows how to uh, control or then use this ai system to their benefit would have a better opportunity taking advantage of the new economy or what is called a data economy as compared to someone who is just a uh, quote unquote stuck to the old ways as far as challenges, um, I can see in the in the comments or in the convo or chat, yes, I think the chat, people have highlighted the fact that AI is taking away jobs. And that is true. I mean, this issue of AI taking away jobs was very much crucial to even the 2016 election in the US and it's still a major problem. And it's probably, going to continue. Most of the data is pointing to the fact that the reality is that if, if I can get something done cheaper using some technology or some approach, as a business, I always go that route. And that's what's happening. So businesses are cut down their costs by automating, and that's probably going to continue. There's a very complex discussion to be had here. So one immediate solution for young people is to do what we have discussed understand your sector, understand how AI can help you to improve your value to your sector. But then again, on the government level, there's a serious conversation to be had that how do we help or what are the social programs to have in place for those who are displaced due to automation and then related uh, technology. So there's a conversation that has been going on in the past few years around universal basic income um, you had one candidate in the U.S. who basically one of his key policies was that every person was going to get, what, some thousands of dollars that they can use to manage their affairs. And that is a good question for people to fall back on. But then also there's a lot of capacity building that is really, really important. Africa's population, Africa has one of the biggest youth population. Actually, Africa has the biggest youth population in the world. We have so much potential as far as what we could do with that. If we are building capacity towards AI emerging technologies, we could literally do with artificial intelligence what China did with manufacturing and what uh, India is doing with software engineering. So we could take advantage of the fact that the world is being is going through this digitalization phase, which is rapidly increasing due to the pandemic and the fact that we are relying on this technology. So. There's a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of challenges, but they can all be addressed in a very proactive way, both on the government, national level, but also on the individual level of young people just uh, entering the work space or already existing in the labor force. Thank you, Darlington. So as you mentioned, um, each sector can benefit from AI. And you also talked about governance in particular. So there's one question here in the chat box um, which is what is the role of AI in ensuring good governance in Africa? And especially now in those times where, for example, in Tanzania, there's the elections going on and a lot of troubles in Nigeria as well with the SARS and SARS movement. Uh, in Guinea uh, as well with the elections, uh, there are now uh, a lot of uh, troubles. So what, uh, what would be the role of AI in this, in this, um, in this case? 
right? So one key role that AI could play is when you combine AI with blockchain. Um, a lot of governments, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible, but a lot of local governments are not a big fan of e-government, like true e-government, because if we can digitize everything and keep records of everything, doesn't allow so much room for corruption. And I will stop right there on that point. <laughs> but then if you've digitized everything, you have a lot of record with AI, what you can do is you have systems that are for fraud detection. So this is being used in the banking sector. You just have to look at records and whenever there's any anomaly or funny behavior across some record is flagged as a possible fraudulent activity. If we implemented this on the government level, this could save us billions that we lose uh, due to corruption and due to malpractices that exist. And also with the blockchain technology, what we can do is that we'll have smart contracts. So whenever anything happens, we can track it from its beginning to its end. Whenever there's any exchange, if it has to do with even policy creation and the implementation, we can track it from the very old origins and then where it's implemented. If there's any issue, we can identify exactly who, which government office failed to do its job. And so this has a lot of potential in, as far as uh, ensuring uh, good governance in Africa, but also AI could be very destructive. Um, we know the case of Cambridge Analytica and Africa was one of the breeding grounds or one of the testing grounds for Cambridge Analytica, uh, sorry, Cambridge Analytica using AI and data science to influence democracies and election. We dealt with that, but the problem is not gone. It's just one entity that has been removed from it. Just end of this year, CNN did an investigative documentary and then they found out that allegedly there are troll farms that are being run in Ghana using young people, uh, especially in the university. So University of Ghana was one of the places that were named. So they have these young people that they are being paid and allegedly these are Russian troll farms and they are being paid to use, to take advantage of social media and then the AI solutions that they use in influencing the political dialogue in the US and then other parts of the world. So even though Africa and the African government are not directly be involved, their citizens are being dragged into some of this very complex and problematic issues, and this could become catastrophe. Um, and so we need to address it. We need the right policies, we need the right regulations. When they discovered this uh, institution, they shut it down, the police came in and tried to stop them, and they arrested a few people here and there. The main corporates went away freely and he just relocated. Um, we don't have strong regulations. If you look at European Union's GDPR, the General uh, Data Protection Regulation, is very, they have strong fines on it. We have Data Protection Act in a number of African countries, but whoever was caught doing this should have been hit with. They should have very much traced this all the way back to its origin, and there should be serious fines and even serious jail time that prevent this action. So uh, we need to have the right policies and regulations in place to curb some of these uh, catastrophes from happening. Thank you, Lorington. Actually, you actually answered one of the questions I wanted to ask around regulations in Africa, so already thank you. Uh, so now I will ask my last question. Um, since this talk topic is about being su successful in Africa and making it, how do you become successful in artificial intelligence? Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, so as much as I like advice, I think it's also important to highlight that there are several ways of killing. Oh, that's probably not a good phrase to use in, outside of a Ghanaian country. So there's something you say that there's several ways of killing a cat, but generally don't kill a cat. Um, the point being that I can give you how I am kind of got here in my journey and how I'm headed, but then you don't have to follow exactly that. I didn't actually follow someone's footsteps exactly. So you have the opportunity of creating your path. So uh, as far as success, for me, I think it's important to start from a problem. If I was just learning AI for AI's sake, I don't think I would have gone as far as I did. I had a problem that was very tough that required me to 
dedicate my every being towards solving. And so I had to learn everything I could and I had to practice a whole awful lot. So you can read all the books, take all the courses, but until you're actually building AI systems and testing them in the real world, it limits how much progress you can make. Um, there's so much more we want to do in agriculture. Some of it is not even technologically possible today. So you have full self-driving cars that people are working on, which is not fully solved. We want to build a fully automated agro system that can plant, starting from the actual planting all the way to harvesting end to end, no human involved. And this is way more complex than it sounds. So a problem like that is going to keep driving me for the next few years to learn, develop new techniques and do everything. Um, so yeah, I recommend having a problem, a passion that drives you and letting that force you to learn as much as you can. Um, yeah, and then you can take advantage of a lot of opportunities. I think now that there's pandemic going on, a lot of opportunities are mm -hmm. virtual. So you can literally sit behind your computer and have access to everything and have access to summits with some of the most brilliant minds all over the globe and learn from them. So taking advantage of this is always uh, important. As far as success also on the monetary end, um, yeah, I think AI has AI is really eating up sectors. And so there's a lot of funding, there's a lot of uh, ROI that is already being seen. And even when you look at the development space, so just in the past few months, the number of grants that have come our way that highlighted that AI and then this. And so it's been an interesting journey. But um, yeah, that is still just a glimpse of what is going to happen in the next few years. There's so much more funding that is going to head towards AI and there's so much return on investment that is going to be coming from the AI space. Thank you so much, Darlington. So we will now wrap up this session. Uh, so we had insightful and um, quite gifted guests today. Uh, we have learned that basically one of the key um, points I would say for success is consistency, perseverance, but also start looking for the problem first. Don't forget the passion. Um, and also if you have to create your, the opportunity to create your own path, go for it. So thank you very much for all for attending this session and thank you again for the panelists. I will hand over now to Chinue uh, for the last session. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Asito. Thank you so much, Darlington, and a lot of insights in that section. Our programs seek to achieve sustainable development by igniting the positive energy of the greater segment of Africa's population, the young men and women. Grand Africa Initiative, GAIN, promoting youth empowerment for development. Join us for a greater impact together.